take on Azure Ray here in game one. This best of two. And Nature's Prophet is already out on the map. TPing and warding. Although he's not smoked, which we usually see. I, I like the choice to not smoke, to be honest, if you TP out with Nature's Prophet. Because, you know, you're not going to TP in Vision. And you know nobody could have been there already. So, um, the fact that they didn't insta-smoke here. And maybe even that early ward can give you information to, you know, choose to go for a wrap wraparound later. I still think they should have purchased the smoke, though, just to have it uh, available. But yeah, I like this little little change to not be smoked. And meanwhile, on is... Asher Raid, they're also not smoking out. Yeah, neither team smoking. Like, how often do we see both teams, five-man smoke, move to runes? Uh, this game, nobody, nobody messing around with it. Clockwork is like five gold away from having money for a smoke. I think Tiny could have afforded one, but FY is like, nah, I want more regen. I'm against a, a freaking Batrider in lane. And oh, position three, Dalai Lama Batrider. Need all the regen that I can carry. Yeah, he really does. So we should see early early magic sticks. We already see trolls starting out with magic stick on bottom lane, expecting that spam. But uh, Batrider doesn't have to spam the sticky nape on that hard. Right, yeah, so what, what is the build now on, on offlane bat? Because we saw a while the fire, just Firefly Max. Yeah, a Firefly Max is still the play, but you can go for like one point flame break, two point Firefly, and then go back for Sticky Napalm. Um, <laughs> this is classic Schofield in behind enemy lines, being an absolute nuisance. He's going to get arrowed and killed here eventually. Yeah, but he's drawn the blocks. attention of four heroes to come his way. They're still He's very happy to chase him down, right? Fires. He doesn't want to die. Oh, the tree plant. Nah, not working out. Skillfield dies. And first blood <laughs> yeah, for Tiny, eats. who munches the tree. Okay, that, that was... I, I don't think it was value to keep trying to stay alive on Clockwork there, losing his fairy fire and using, you know, an iron branch plus the tree there. But uh, this at least bought some time. They arrive a little bit late to the lanes and they had to TP away. I mean, what did he spend? He spent a branch plus a fairy fire, so that's 115. And he spent a tango, which is 30. Yeah. So he spent like, he spent like 150 gold <laughs> as he was dying. He's just trying to stay alive as long as he can. Top lane, we see a bit of drain here coming out from uh, formerly known as Faith Beyond. Bach. To uh, dominate the lane with uh, Razor. I think everyone's just accepted that his name is Faith Beyond. Like, no one's <laughs> calling him Bach. <laughs> He's gonna bring his electric symphony to this top lane. <laughs> okay, Jay did not access his small camp. He's gonna have to spend a second sentry to unlock that. And try and maintain the lane up there. Or down that bottom lane. Schofield down by Lama, just backing up away from this Marana and Troll. A very oppressive lane. Like no matter who Troll is with, they're just spamming axes, right clicking, punishing you every time you step up to the creep wave. Davalama Schofield having to really scrap and fight for every last hit. Yeah, this bottom lane is a problem, actually. They don't have a hero who can deal damage to Mirana here, so she's very free to just lay in auto attacks all the time, either harassing or helping out with CSing. Uh, since Clockwork can't trade hits with her, and now that she has Leap as well, you can't even catch her, so it's really tricky. Um, I think this lane, they need to start doing shenanigans pretty early, or Troll is gonna just get free farm. So is, is that kind of lane pulling and dragging yeah. waves with Schofield? Or is it like, wait for level three and we can kill the troll? No, no, yeah. Shenanigans, I mean, always the, the pulling, like uh, not playing the lane, basically. Okay. Uh, so going behind the tower, I think they need to look towards something like that or secure that they have the pull themselves. Yeah, a couple of sentries there from Azure Ray blocking up the large camp and guarding the small. And Dyer does have an observer ward up on that high ground, so they've got some easy access into that jungle to start that lane pulling if they want to do it. But for yep. now, they're just kind of normally playing the lane. Well, they're, they're doing decent though. Batrider has nice CS so far, uh, but he is out of region and uh, this double range with uh, spells as well coming in, it can really hurt. Yeah, and Troll is like unbothered free farm basically so far. Been taking some peeks into that mid lane, dead even between the Puck and the Lesh. Got their bottles, yeah. got their water runes, everyone's pretty happy there. Nice thing about Lesh Rack against the uh, Puck, well, you can get your stun dodged, you can still just click Lightning Storm on the Puck, and if you face shift dog, uh, dodges it, you just click it again. So you can't really hide from the Lightning Storm, you have to run away. K1 and KJ, aesthetic names up in that top lane. Hit around by FY's Tiny. 
K1 actually dragging his wave onto the tower there. So what, what is that an indication of? He wants to just kill off this wave and push the lane out so they can pull? Or TPing bottom? They're creating space for the Nature's Prophet to get on top of low. They've got level threes on Schofield and Davai Lama. Firefly over the top of the troll, and this should be enough to finish him off. And oh, Davai Lama stepped back, but he's Still got him. that little bit more from the flame break. And it looks like Chen Ming should be okay here. Two leap charges, five wand, drags the wave away from tower. Yeah, KJ, he plays a really good Nature's Prophet. He, uh, you know, I had the pleasure of casting some of his games in the past, and he definitely makes it work, even in matchups where I didn't think that he would do well uh, on Nature's Prophets. He made it shine, so looking forward to seeing more of his rotations here. A good first one. K1 getting drained up top, but he's got Warcry. There's that movement speed boost to get away from Bar. So yeah, was, was that uh, intentional then, all planned? Because top lane, K1 like dragged, aggroed the enemy creep wave under his tower to kill it off faster that allowed the Prophet... Oh, they're fighting bot again? Deja vu, I thought I was watching a replay there for a second. Davai Lama's over the Marana now. No more Burning leaps. Burning her, and you're right, there are no more leaps. I mean, Lou hasn't seen a creep wave in like a minute and a half now. He's stuck between tier one and tier two. Yeah, K1, I think he set it up that way, but the problem is he doesn't have a pull camp and the creep wave is in a horrendous spot right now. So while this is good, what's going on bottom, top, this uh, this Sven is struggling a bit. He is finding a chance to go up here and get some CS. Gets three in a row, actually, right under the nose for Faith to be on here. And <laughs> a double wave arriving on him. Yeah, they're going to have to put some emphasis onto this bottom lane now. FY, Tiny rotates there. KJ still lurking around in the shadows further south. We'll see... If Heroic keep up this aggression, because they're bringing more regen and making sure that Davai Lama and Schofield can stick around in that lane. What, what is KJ doing? He's just fake pumping TP. Where am I going? Top, oh, bottom, mid. mid there, of hey, look at me. I'm coiling up with the help of this Pug. Ooh, the that arrow. Gold, though. Tan Ming onto the Pug now, and KJ still fighting Ori. Analog. He's going to jaunt away. Can't stick around and play here, and KJ will be the sacrifice. That was a nice arrow coming in there. Gives a little bit of a breathing room for Leshrac to turn that fight around. Meanwhile, top lane, looks like Razor has uh, finally caught this Sven, who was being very, very cheeky going in under the tower to try and get some CS. K1 just pushing himself a little bit too far. He didn't really have another play, though, because if he just sits back, he just loses automatically, and he can't go jungle yet. I mean, they're making a lot of noise, Heroic. <laughs> Everywhere you look, they're, they're doing cheeky stuff, doing funny moves. Nature's Prophet obviously lending a, a helping hand in, in pretty much every one of these, that global TP. It feels oh. like Azure Ray still that little bit more comfortable in their moves, very decisive, especially with this oh, move K1 up top. K1 getting dived under the tier one, FY and Bach draining all of his damage. That is a lot of right click if the Razor can keep tabs on him, but Schofield's arrival with the potential TP from Puck there, which does get cancelled enough to dissuade Azure Ray from going any further. Yeah, they're just still hovering though, so he wants to play up here. At least gonna give mana to uh, his Razor again before he leaves. Doesn't look like they're gonna get anything more here, but the Sven is not having an easy start. And Lou finally with a bit of silence down bottom. Oh, there's that Wisdom Rune play. Nature's Prophet just TPs away, steals the Wisdom Rune. And their own Wisdom Rune uncontested for now. Where's the troll dying? Solo to Davai Lama bottom. The Batrider's over the top of them with four oh, sticky no. napalm charges, but the arrows there, Miranda, gonna save the day. Yeah, we've got nothing left from Davai Lama, getting turned on now with a creep wave on him. FY does claim a kill on the other side of the map as they dive the enemy tier one. But that was pretty close. Davai Lama nearly had that straight up solo kill. Yeah, that was, I mean, he, he looked for the chance and you see that damage with the maxed out Firefly already level three, so 90 damage per second. It does so much with a few uh, sticky napalms as well. Icky, icky sticky napalm. <laughs> ah, they're, they're icky, dude. <laughs> they do give you the ick. They're nasty stuff. TP bottle refill from mid lane on the puck. So Clockwork running away with the bottle. Actually, he's <laughs> stealing it. Eight minute rune. Down at bottom of regen. Tian Ming. Good arrow again. Ooh, uh, not too far away, hey? If, if that stun connected from uh, Tiny, he wouldn't have a chance to do anything and the uh, Leshrac stun would secure the kill, so that was very close. Going in for a steal now, they know there's a stack. Yeah, cheeky little move, but this is the thing, right? Azure Ray, every move they've made has felt much more, much more clean. They're not really giving too much where Heroic are making kind of drastic moves to, to find little weaknesses wherever they can. 
Not much yeah, overall. of it. Oh, overall, I agree, but they have a little bit of advantage as well on Heroic that they got the double Wisdom Rune, you know, helps them out a bit, so Bakari got some share of that experience as well. Gets himself further up. And the troll is definitely having a sad time. Needs a bit of help now as Ori and FY, they do arrive. Davai Lama has boots to travel, though. Too speedy on that mounted bat. Gets Looks away like his plan danger. on troll is to go for a battle fury this game. So there are many different builds you could go on troll. You can go maelstrom builds. You can go for, you know, the battle fury. And this time he's going to go for the farming route. And uh, makes sense when you're playing as Nature's Prophet too. Then you just naturally have a way to cut the trees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the Arteezy Sven battle fury. Just, I need this cutting blade. Good move though. FY has found a way to wrap around in onto Davai Lama. That rider down, but a three-man coil from Analog. Might allow Schofield to get in on top of them. No. They're too afraid. No backups coming, and they can't continue playing there. Meanwhile, up at top, Bach and Tan Ming diving again. Arrow connects on the clockwork. They'll chase KJ's profit and kill him off. K1 is arriving from the right hand side. Does not have too much to give, though. Maybe just try and farm the creep wave while his teammates are all dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm here to take the CS. Mid lane, trying for analog here. Boss combo by Tiny. Ooh, with a spell, I think. Maybe. Wedding rift, face shift. I mean, that's it. Analog, dead. Uh, he didn't He didn't worry about the door, but he had already had out, so then he's just stuck there. K1 does get a nice snipe onto Bach top, so it looks like Azure Ray have dived just a step too far. Tenming trying to get Schofield, but the clockwork is out there and into the fog. This is nice seeing the, the early travels Batrider just get involved, you know, make moves and holding this top lane so it doesn't crumble. Oh, now they're on FY. Yeah, really hinging on this Batrider, these moves now to swing momentum back into Heroic's favor. And FY just avalanching Davai Lama, but that's a good flame break. Pushing back into this Firefly Napalm. Another good toss to send the Batrider away. FY with some tools at his disposal just to stay alive. That was nice by FY. He waited long enough that when he stunned with Avalanche, he could not get one more sticky Napalm reapplied. So he actually went down from two charges to zero and then mm. back up to two. So if he didn't stun at that moment right there, could maybe have died to, to Batrider. Um, look at <laughs> look at the warding from Heroic. <laughs> this <The> is triple. <laughs> 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 yep, that's defensive warding if I ever saw it. Jesus, okay, th this is a little bit overdoing it. It's not just the observers though, right? It's the quadruple sentries as well. <laughs> it's like, no one will see our Sven. Our Sven will see you. <laughs> It's so funny that they deworded up here now, like, oh yeah, they might not have vision. No, they, they still have a full, full security system set up here. Marana, you better keep dewording. <laughs> God, I've got tons of it. Oh, and K1 going to be happy just slotting back in that pocket to farm through that northern jungle. Might, got himself uh, the might... Mask of Madness, so he's farming pretty fast now with maxed out Great Cleave. I can start thinking about Ancient shortly. There's some large camp stacks and he'll migrate his way down to that right side of the map. It does leave this top tower a little exposed, and that's why Davai Lama has come up here just to protect it. Role playing is like a tide hunter, you know, off laner comes up, guards the tier one. But unlike a tide hunter, he does not have a ravage or innate tankiness. Schofield hookshot misses, and Davai Lama's down. He tried to defend that tier one objective, but Battle Bar, he's just diving into this jungle now, getting cleaved down by the Sven. FY's arrived with Ori as well, the stun connects, oh, Sven getting Sven. tossed around left and right, and down he falls. And Nature's Prophet's still in danger here as well. Trust Ulti could just lock onto him with that if he wants, but doesn't even really need to uh, back up a little close enough. The way out here for Nature's the trees! Prophet. The trees! <laughs> yeah. Low his Quilling Blade was on cooldown there. He's already used it. That one goes down. It's a really good fight here for Azure Ray. Taking control finally over this top part of the map. They actually did get the second D ward as well in that ward, so. You know, third one is about to die in 40 seconds, and the control they had on top part of the map is fading here for Heroic. Which means Sven has to make his move over and start farming the ancient area now. Yeah, I mean, Sven was pretty happy to just clap down that Razor, but he gets met with a tremendous amount of force from the rest of Azure Ray. That final pickoff on the Prophet led to the tier 1 take. Yeah, now like you're saying, that map state. Seeing the Chinese team take a bit more control up there. Yeah. He's farming really fast on Sven now, though, with his ulti, and they already had a stack on Ancient, so he's still going to be pretty happy being down here. But the hero I'm looking more towards is this Leshrac. 
uh, in this game. We have Kaya already, almost full Kaya Sanj. Going for the same build we saw Lorenov go on his slash rack yesterday. And uh, if he's, you know, gonna deliver like Lorenov did, then then uh, Heroic will have a hard time. Yeah, just output so much damage. When you've got heroes like, you know, Mirana with a Moonlight Shadow to give you that, that bit of umbrella coverage and safety, Tiny with tosses back and forth, like you said during the draft, both aggressive and defensive tools. Uh, Lash Rack just feels so good to just run, run people down. Move wherever you want to. Yeah, that's really what the, the hero shines at. If you have a lot of other heroes who can help control, then Lesh just needs to exist. And that existence damage is right there. Fuck Arkham. Yeah, trying to get something done here with the coil onto the razor. That rider burning him and Bach does die. Stuck in the firefly. Stood around too long. Yeah, very nice. Uh, taking the chance immediately. There, and that was an arcane rune ulti for uh, Puck as well. So he's going to have it back in 40 seconds only. Already having that Witchblade. Got some nice damage this game. And they've got some very deep wards now. You know, keeping that conversation about vision coverage from Heroic. Up and running. Low. He does get a sentry down, but he's already being run at. I think his spidey senses were tingling, just not fast enough. Ulti, Battle Trance not available. Down he goes. Yeah, that was unlucky for him. Meanwhile, though, Batrider gets taken down on mid lane, too. KJ? TP's out. Yeah, you're right. Davalama did get, get found by that Marana. Azure Ray trying to rally around their ancients. And they got the D ward already. I'm sure they're looking no a lot there. stronger five man right now. They have the mech on the Marana as well. So if they just keep five manning, very hard for them to fight into. Oh, no heroic. Oh, FY with a two man avalanche. And they found the target they desire the most K1 Sven. They will coil the Lesh, but Analog, he can't stand there and fight. Can't keep them back. He's got to run. He's got to hide. Yeah, they're just FY getting everything blinked. they want right now. He wanted that vision. He might see the puck in a second. Analog. He's going to get jumped here. Nice. If he goes up. Hey, hello. He walked into that ward and the arrow is perfectly timed on landing. Dead on arrival. Oh, no, he didn't hit. Hey, hey. They needed not. one more tiny auto attack. They needed more hits. Analog's out. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the troll has died. Yeah, troll goes down to Nature's Prophet and Clockwork alone there. So not having the ulti available, it was still in cooldown. Just came off cooldown now. He actually died. Very clutch timing by the two supports, realizing they could kill the carry there. That's kind of incredible. Yeah, getting up there, getting the job done. And Schofield rushing straight into Aghanim Scepter on his clockwork. Get that overclock in as quickly as possible. It's super strong, actually. Yeah, early, early Aghanim Scepter and then just spam rockets is very impactful. So I like this item, little blame. Invisibility. Batra is swinging top, looking for that Razor, but good read by Faithy. I'm backing out. Looks like he's well just popping ulti off cooldown, you know, farming. He wants items, way more items than this. Analog, softening them for him. And Tianmeng gonna sit mid, wait to see what comes. Looks yeah, like right now it feels like, you know, Team Heroic, they're waiting a little bit more for timings here. They want to spend to at least have his BKB ready against all these stuns coming out, all the control. So it looks to be his next item, but I still feel like he needs Blink Dagger as well uh, before he can really do too much. Me on the side of the Ash Ray, smoke up, you know, they, they have no breaks here. No, no, they just keep on going. And do, you, do you want Sven to go Blink or is like an Aghanim Scepter an okay? I think Axe is buffed, but I still think Blink is better. Uh, Axe is maybe decent, but I still think the Blink Dagger is more reliable. The immediacy and relying on reliability of it. Schofield gonna break the smoke there. Sees Azure Ray all coming across the hills. Again, playing under dire vision. Always gonna be challenging. They're pinging that out now. They want control of this area. And with Shan Ming and Bach. And get rid of that Observer Ward. Like you said, Heroic pretty pretty content just to kind of sit back, guard the areas that they know they control where the Sven is farming. He's cleared Ancients, he's moving to bottom lane, feeling very happy Nature's about Prophet. things. And Aggressive keeping up top, onto Ori. Sprout into Lasso, Tenming's here with a mech to heal him. Ori stays alive a little longer, can get out of there, no. Spirit Rassable still on him, ticking him down. Schofield with Analog coiling the Razor, but that's going to cut things short. As K1's arrival signals the end of the fight. Ah, oh, he had backpacked Voodoo Mask there on Leshrak. Maybe he could have stayed alive a little bit longer, perhaps even gotten away. 
if you have that spell of life, still there going as, you know, you really rely on it badly when you play Lesh. Like, any survivability you can get. That was real unfortunate. I guess that's also why the Spirit Wrestle is such a, a huge pickup for this Nature's Prophet. Razor oh, targeted next. The Power Rangers have arrived. Della Lama comes in, Analog's there, Schofield out of the woodwork, appearing onto this Razor. I mean, crazy there was one hero there. Sprout, man. Suddenly there were four. Yeah, they they have a weird plus one who just keeps showing up all the time. I don't know. This green hero seems pretty good. With the mushroom hat. <laughs> That's how you know he's uh, reliable. He's always going to be there, whether it's to feed or to die, you know, or to kill something. The circle of life continues no matter what. Feed or die usually is the two alternatives for uh, Nature's Prophet with mushroom hat. Yeah, pretty much. It's the crazy hat. Radiant are scanning. Never, never quite sure what's going on in their heads. Almost have entire Greaves done for Mirana. Looking pretty far for a support in this game. But on the core side of things, it is Sven leading the way. And overall, the Rogue are doing pretty good with their farm. Sven, 200 gold away now from the BKB. So that's going to be a big timing. He already has an Assault Curse queued up. So we'll see if he goes for that blink or not. Um, looks like he just wants to bulk up and get a bit stronger as well because armor very good when you're against racer and troll yeah and and honestly kind of a weird carry to carry matchup in this game as well thinking about just hero to hero and it often feels like troll comes out on top and a lot of these melee oh hang on park is getting caught in the mid lane avalanche toss into split earth but davai llama's here lasso's up the lash to save the day coil will keep fy back Dabai Lama going pretty deep there, but into the Diabolic Edict and just right clicks out of the rest of Azure Ray as Nature's Prophet comes in. Schofield's killed Ori. KJ dying. Oh, the hook shot misses. And look back in for round 10 of this fight. And K1, uh, yet again, he's arrived as the fight ends. Boy, he might actually get something done, though. Oh, runs in. Storm <laughs> One stun. And runs away. <laughs> yep. One stun, run away. That, that's going to be the carry contribution here. A little bit disconnected and disjointed there by uh, by the Puck and the Bat Rider. Not focusing the same target between the two as they were uh, getting jumped. It was a bit of a panic situation for them, but had both of them gone on Leshrak, I think he would have died pretty fast. Instead, they spread the damage out, coiled one, lasso the other, and split the auto attacks fully too. Um, so it still worked out really good for Azure Ray, even though they lose their mid laner. They're still pretty happy with the outcome there. Yeah, get a two for one. Just still control your map. Control. Just to go back and farm through some ancients potentially. Oh yeah, wisdom runes are coming up as well. While heroic will take down their tormentor. And the Aghanim Scepter overclocking for the clockworks here. The rocket flares, they're everywhere. Yeah, they're so good. The global damage, we talked about it a little bit. You mentioned in the draft uh, that the global presence of Nature's Prophet plus the rockets, uh, look at it now. The harassment <laughs> actually deters them from finishing Tormentor. So he has to troll ulti. He wants to take it, but yeah, now with a bit of help, he can go. This is more effort than you wanted, though. Normally, troll can just take it on his own by popping a late ulti, but... Oh, look at Nature's Prophet. He wants to be cheeky. No way. Yeah. No way, no way, no way. Oh my okay. god, he's killing them. No he's way. killing all of them. Okay. What? He's going to get three. Bark is dying. No, he's fine. Now in comes FY. Oh, KJ. <laughs> we were oh talking my about this god, mushroom dude. hat. You're never sure what's going on in their heads. And KJ had a grand plan. I told you, this guy on Nature's Prophets, he is a dangerous man. He sees opportunities and ta he takes them. The Clockwork combo there, setting up everyone to be low HP. And this buys so much time for his team. Sven enjoying the map super hard, and meanwhile, a gank being orchestrated towards top. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, back into real time. Ori getting run out by Dabai Lama. The rocket flares are there, and the hook shot to keep the Razor back away from the bat. Now, Faith Bian stuck inside and killed by Analog. Wow, things are just going amazingly well now for Heroic on the back of that little Tormentor incident right there. Um, yeah, that, that was that was all coming back to the, the simple rocket spam, honestly, setting all this up. And now they're in a great spot to just keep control on the map. And uh, I like the moves that we're seeing. Heroic, they're activating a lot on their heroes and meanwhile letting Sven still farm. So he doesn't have to go for Blink Dagger if things go this well, I feel. And now what, Roshan what, is on the menu, perhaps, as well. What an incredible sequence, you know? <laughs> Just trying to imagine, like, in, in the heads and the, you know, the team comms of Azure Ray thinking, the, the Prophet would never dare TP into Yeah, surely base. not. <laughs> surely not. Dude, so, he almost got a triple there. That was... Yeah. If he got three kills, that would have been one of the best clips I've seen. Just amazing. Yeah, greatest moments. Beautiful. 
careful. Oh, I should already do scan this rogue. They know it's happening. Just nowhere near enough by to contest. So it does look like K1 with his top net worth spent. He's going to be able to clap down Roshan. Give the Aegis to Analog's Puck. So a bit more freedom there for Puck to get in and out of fights a little easier. Yeah, and Puck has good item progression too now. Having the Kai Assange and the Witchblade in 2,100 gold. So just needs this creep wave here and he has his Blink Dagger. Um, so he's going to send that out. And then Aggression is going to really turn up as he has the Aegis in hand as well. On the side of Asher Ray, though, I mean, they're working on a PKB for the Razor. He needs that quite badly. Meanwhile, they added a Yule Scepter on the Lesh, so he has some control for himself or even Yulesing the enemy. There's some way to protect against this K1 Sven, who's going to come in pretty hot in these team fights. If they lock on to someone, they die pretty much immediately. Yeah, I like their I like their disables. They have a hookshot and batrider lasso, two things that don't care about the BKB as well. So reliable, reliable catch. Okay, he's coming for you. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> the shark in the water. Chen Meng is going to leap and TP out of that. So they expend a little bit. Heroic, chasing Marana, chasing ghosts. That try to goes down bottom to a catch by Tiny and Leshrac, comboing up a bit, and they bring him down. He has overall been playing really aggressively and not dying too much though on that rider. So some of these deaths are going to happen when you play like this. He was super far up. Hey, he's already down to six second BKB, huh? Yeah, I mean, active gameplay here from uh, Heroic for sure. Man, nearly up through the Shiva's guard. Just a, a thousand gold away from it now. And that recipe change still catches me. 2,050 gold recipe for Shiva's car. It is a long way to finishing it up. I mean, it's crazy to think how overtuned it was on the on the rework on it. That was like 22 armor for less gold than it is now and yep. more stats as well. It was pretty good. It was a good, good item. Very strong and powerful. Well, as you're right, try to make a concerted effort down into this bottom lane. And taking control of the Ancients, booting K1 away from his farm and potentially maybe finding a kill on him with an avalanche, but no toss back. Arrow whiffs and K1 turns. He's going in, looking to fight. Storm Hammer and gets the God Strength going. Hits the Razor Illusion a couple of times before chasing FY. They need a bit of control here and Schofield will provide. Hook shot into that right click damage and raw power from K1 to finish him off. Yeah, that's, that's a big a, streak as well. Yeah, he had a wicked streak, actually. That was the first death for FY here, who's been delivering really well in this game. Mid, we see a coil looking for a kill on the troll, and they might have it. He's silenced, he's Ooh. controlled, but he's got himself back out of there. That was close. Very nice Rocket attempt. Flares? He's dodging the flares. He's dodging, dodging, dodging. <laughs> Serpentine! Serpentine. <laughs> I mean, we see the impact from the Clockwork as well in that previous fight. When Sven popped ulti, he wanted to run after them, but he didn't see too much. But Ro Clockwork just pops the Aghanims there, triple rocket. Suddenly you have a lot of vision to work with, and uh, it just helps so much in these fights. That's incredible. Now they get to press forward a little bit. Finally getting across the river and making a name for themselves in this Radiant Ancient spot. High ground ward up there again, and they'll try and play into it. And as Lowe shows himself on the mid wave. Not to be bothered until the rest of the cavalry arrive now for heroic. Oh, Marana has to be careful. <laughs> Touches the hook shot just barely. Uh, who's stepping up? The... Also, Troll right. is going for an interesting build in this game, going Radiant's for shrouds. Aghanims and Shroud, not really the most like carry man fight type build, but it's going to give a lot of survivability against all the magic damage they have on the side of uh, Heroic. Yeah, probably feeling like, hey, I'll deal with the, the bat and the puck. Maybe find a, a different way to deal with the Sven later on. I mean, they have Razor, so the, the mentality is, you know, Razor takes care of Sven, and the right. troll just needs to exist and be strong, not just disappear to a puck coil. Schofield, he knew that they were lurking in that Moonlight Shadow. Try to dust and rocket flare. Azure Ray actually retreating back to their base. As heroic. FY. He did get clipped there with a harpoon, but oh, the toss back. back. Into the base. K1 in some serious trouble. FY again setting up a beautiful go there on the Sven. Yeah, that is super nice, really good coordination there. And a little bit too aggressive again. The Sven just overstepping right outside the enemy base. 
a defensive call to try and get the rest of them out of here. Schofield with the cogs. Nice barrier. Yeah, to get him up to high the, ground. Both Western runes going for the way of heroic at least. So at least while they lost their carry, they retreat and, you know, take whatever they can on the way out. But this does allow Asher Ray to get on the map 50 seconds without the uh, Sven alive. Yeah, and that, that was the Aegis of the Pug just now expiring as well. So that window of incredible strength that Heroic were trying to leverage into map position kind of comes to a close. And yeah, like, like you say, Azure Ray making sure that they're the ones doing the same thing now. Troll very adept at just getting onto an objective, getting up the further stacks. Doing quite a bit of damage to that tier uh, two, but KJ pretty has early. different ideas. He TPs in aggressively, sprouts up low. In from the back, though, watch Ori and Analog have a bit of a scrap in that jungle. Split Earth lands, Analog's still fighting. Eh, give up on it for now, though. He looks missed like. the point. Oops. I heard it, but I didn't see it. I'm yeah, he put it on the tree. <laughs> I couldn't see it, too. I was like, the coil used, but no one was coiled, so I just didn't want to say anything. Yeah, he misclicked a bit. Really nice flame break from Batrider, though, pushing away the Razor onto the high ground there as they tried to chase Nature's Prophet stayed alive. He was trying to intentionally bait on Nature's Prophet by TPing in early, so hopefully they go on him and then they turn around with a big coil. But he was just a few seconds too early. Luckily, he got out with his life. So, uh, stays alive and they can start to look to make moves again. I mean, no one died there, right? Even, even KJ got himself away. Yeah, everyone fine. Oh, the rocket flares. Over the top of Ori and Tianming, but in the light shadow, giving them that, that cover of invis. So the slow on that is so annoying, man. Yeah, he doesn't have the true sight uh, talent. He probably won't take it as well this game. I suspect he's going to go for the rocket flare damage talent as you have the Aghanims. It's really, really nice. But uh, yeah, this, this spam from Clockwork, it's obnoxious to play against. Very strong slow. Moonlight Shadow comes to an end, so it's time to smoke properly. Heading down south, Roshan is at least one minute away. And it looks like they're going to go into the enemy ancients here and maybe find Analog. Oh, FY. Just off the mark there, and Analog's going to get the coil and the rift. Does get Yules into the stun for the Lesh, though, into the waiting arms of Ori and Lo. Huck, what have we got left? Analog with a blink. Does have just enough in the tank as K1 arrives onto the Troll Warlord. Now we see the Mano e Mano. Troll versus Sven and Troll says no. Here come no, Rockets. No, that's not what I want. Rocket Flares will slow them down. The Troll, the hook oh, shot nice in stones. onto Ori. Schofield starts it off onto the Lesh. Half HP already. Barrow needs to get into the lasso and the Troll's also being focused by the Sven. Cleave down and killed by Analog. Yule's there from Ori. Buys him a little bit of time but Sven is overwhelming with the damage. KJ and Schofield in the meantime have slowed down Bark and are tracking behind that tier two. I what a beautiful hook shot, the hook shot there by uh, Clockwork. Getting onto the Lash Rack and stunning the troll on the way through, even though you still get stunned as the Clockwork passes if he's close enough. That was really, really perfectly done. And they get the kills. You see the Sven, he's been farming a lot for this, but in this moment, he is very strong. The Warcry armor talents here, not the slow resistance. I guess there's not that many slows to resist in this game. Oh, ah, he's uh, just killed off analog. analog. Oops. Hey, it looks like Analog went for a bit of a, a bit of a dive behind tier two mid, and the Jure, they were they were three man, ready and waiting, with a tiny razor and the Marana. So now it looks like this push is being cut short. Heroic, we're in such a great position here. Ten seconds for Roche. They were you know, killing off tier three, but they've now given away two kills. And the potential move from Azure Raid to now get in front of them with Ori TPing onto Davai Lama. Well, he yules him. Can catch him here. Oh, he didn't him back. Oh, we're going to get there. Davai Lama's too quick. The wind lace difference. Yeah, he didn't expect him to be there. And then he didn't have range for Yule Scepter anymore. By the time he realized that he can catch him, he already got pushed back too far. With the uh, <laughs> psychic deep headband. Here. Goodness gracious, mate. Where's is now Roshan, eh? Yeah, just gonna start towards Roshan. All this on the back of Puck overcommitting on mid, so, you know, when something goes wrong like that, one player makes a mistake, then everything kind of falls apart quickly. A little bit too aggressive. What's happening to Roshan? <laughs> is that animation? He's, he's being netted up and he's turning around, spinning on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Troll, you're spinning with axes. I want to have a bit of fun as well. He's just dancing, man. But yeah, I guess thinking back, you know, the kind of mentality there, Analog's thinking, hey, I can create space, I can push tier two mid, getting, you know, it, it's not a super wild move. Maybe you expected 
Expected move from Azure Race to sit and base defend tier three, but they come out defend tier two, and all of a sudden that all falls apart. I don't think he expected to die to just two supports. He overcommitted a bit under tower and got chain stunned up. You know, Ooh. the Mirana and the Tiny have really been on point. Tiny is seven, one, and eight. As I say that, he may be in trouble here. Is that one going to turn to a two? F1, yes, Yules and Force Staff, Yules and Blink. Oh, that harpoon from K1 has undone the Tiny dead for a minute. With I buyback available. <laughs> Unlucky. It's all, it's all your fault. Yeah, I mean, he's been playing a really clean game here, though, even with that second death here. But this does give a little bit of a window. It is into Aegis, though, so I'm not sure if Heroic will think about high ground too much. Aegis on the troll. Also curious about the loose next item. Looks like he wants a BKB, but feels like this build is very, very defensive on Troll. Not really going for any form of damage increase other than the uh, the Battle Fury and, I mean, a little bit the Aghanim Scepter. This is like stay alive versus all this burst damage and... I mean, I suppose if a Troll stays alive, then he wins a lot of man fights still. Even against a Sven with a ton of items. If Sven doesn't have BKB going, then he just misses anyway into the Whirling Axis. And Troll will eventually kill you with the net. Ori, found out by Analog and KJ. That's a, a four-man move there from Heroic. Looks like Davai Lama was the initial one to get gone on. I got a bit distracted there just looking at Troll Warlord. I'm not, not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> just thinking about his items, what he's been up to. Yeah, because uh, so this Aghanim set up to dispel on the axes. What is there, is there anything, anything super cool he can dispel here? I mean, it's mostly against or... Batrider, yeah. It's mostly a Batrider, but also the the Spirit Vessel doesn't really work aggressively here against him. And uh, he can use it. I think he can still dispel. I'm not sure if he can dispel, like, Yule Scepter with it. But he can, of course, dispel the Gold Scepter on Nature's Prophet. So that's always neat for him. It's a good item overall. Like, a lot of troll players will just buy Aghanim Scepter regardless of the game. Because it's a standard good item. Lower cooldown. Spammable for nice. farming. If it feels good, do it. And I guess at level 25, he'll have that uh, strong dispel from Battle Trans as well. Yeah. Even more slipperiness. Heroic yeah, right now, yes. trying to spread the map pretty wide. He also can dispel the... Um, he can still dispel the Warcry because he doesn't have Shard on Sven. But the moment he has Shard, it's oh. not dispellable. There's so many little things like that. Where it's like, yeah, if you get Shard or the... A level 20 talent, suddenly, you know, Wind Ranger, you can't dispel a Wind Run, haha. <laughs> yeah, speaking of talents, Sven almost level 25. He's just one creep camp away here. Farm the Ancients, and he's going to be 25. As the smoke comes in mid, see if Clockwork tanks for his team. Schofield. Yeah, revealing yeah. it. Jetpacks over the cliffs and far away. Look at that, KJ. Long lines drawn. Yeah. Cut the map in half that way. K1 has the stun duration talent now. See a Gorn Lash. At Davai Lama, Lasso range onto Ori. self yours and Troll pushes forward. Schofield's in with a hook shot there towards Bark. But in comes Sven. Destroys the Lash Strike. Harpoon's onto the Mirana. Nearly kills her immediately as well. KJ in the Ghost Scepter. Lou and Bark have both spent their BKBs and are trying to focus K1 Sven. He needs protection and Analog will offer. Providing a little bit of cover. K1 to try and get to the high ground and run away. As Analog and Schofield, the two bullies in the backyard, battering into Bark. Trying to kill the Rage and they get the job done. Now the Sprout, the Soil is killing off Troll. Lou is down. Age is gone. He's Mark's still chasing too. In the middle of the balls, Davai Lama kills the Mirana on the far left-hand side, and the final target in the meantime is K1 moving off the troll. Blue trapped in the sprout, no way out, and heroic with an incredible team fight. Yeah, chasing in even deeper. Nature's Pro looking for more. Doesn't really catch onto the tiny here, but fantastic fight for them. They cannot push. No spend ulti, so it's not insanely fast, but it does have AC, and their damage is still gonna be really, really good here. Oh, the Fuck catapults, mid. no. Not the catapults. Oh, yeah, they're going. And they've got this lane of racks, it looks like. No defense being offered. And we can see back the replay. K1 just charges straight through the enemy ranks. Then he does his little ring around the rosy, walk around the trees. And Analog and Schofield, such good bodyguarding, really, of the Sven there. It was good good targeting as well by Sven. Oh, oh again going on Lesh. On to Ori. They've got Coil and Lasso grabbing Ori. Sprout and the snap killing off the Lash. Dead for 70. Heroic. Another huge kill. But what's next? Because they've got the Sven, Yules, and Cyclone. BKB from K1. Bark's Razor straight into the Sprout. But gets himself out with a BKB and a, a run back. That Quelling Blade still in his inventory to help out. 
I'm still pushing here as well to have the ulti. Control up in 10. That's pretty wild, man. Have I? You're going behind tier fours. These tower here is going to kill you? Yeah. I mean, this is why they call him Davai Lama and not like sit back and chill Lama. <laughs> you have to go, man. <laughs> Goodness me. Also, I could have sworn his... Didn't he spell his name with like two L's before? Like Lama? I don't know. Isn't a Lama two L's? You're English. Well, there's... Yes, so Lama the animal is two L's. What other llama is there? Um, there is the... Is it Buddhism? Oh. There's the Dalai Lama. That's it. So his, his name is a play on words. I, oh, it's like that, yeah. So, the, the, so he spelled the Lama the same as Dalai Lama. Ah, I didn't right, want to yeah, say it spelled like I had, to, I had to do a quick Google there. I didn't want to say anything incorrect. No, you're right, you're right. That's good. I'm testing you. You passed the test. Well, I knew all this, of course. <laughs> a quick little Google there. But yeah, I think he's got you know, multiple layers to... <laughs> That's true. <laughs> name pun. Well, he used to have a llama as his profile picture as well, right? So... <laughs> yeah. Good stuff. I think so that, that was now? when he had two, uh, two L's. Now he's no longer an animal. Now he's calm and chill. With the, uh, one with the universe. Uh, uh, one with Dota so far has been a, a very good showing from this, this offlane Batrider. I mean, this game is really just blown apart here for Azure. They had pretty good control, but they cannot deal with Sven. Uh, he had great targeting as well on Sven, just realizing I can kill the Leshrac, thus I will kill him. Lesh only has 13 armor. His item build? I, I don't know, man. I feel like I'm missing that armor build. Uh, Leshrac really enjoys having something for armor. 13 is just not enough in this game. Wasn't he building a Shivas at one point? I thought I thought he had it queued up. Yeah, I think he had it queued up, changed his mind, go, went for something else. Uh, mm. And I feel like it would have been really strong because they do have the Assault Cross over on the Razor, uh, which I also feel probably would have been a Shivas if they weren't building it on someone else. So I don't, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, priority items, I guess. I, I just feel Bloodstone is maybe not really worth uh, completing early on Lesh anymore with the nerf to it. Yeah. Shadows take us. Moonlight Shadow. Just keeping Azure Ray covered in their own base. I guess also allowing Tan Ming to push out an additional wave top. Oh, look at these. Look at these pings, though. Davo Lama just never stops. There's enemies over there. You can smell them. Yeah, Blue I'm... standing atop the staircase, and the rocket flares will give the vision. He's telling him to send in his, uh, his treants and rocket flares as well, of course. Looking for a grab, but it's very dangerous. The tiny is right behind it. Yeah. They have so many items right now on the side of Heroic. The Nature's Prophet is looking towards a Nullifier. That's the Mage Slayer, Hurricane Pike, and Ghost Scepter. Clockwork has a Vlad's Force, Ags, and Ghouls. This is a, a pretty hefty amount of item uh, advantage to have on several heroes. Of course, this Sven is just enormous. It's like no one's poor this game. There was a point though, like Tian Ming had a very fast Greaves off the Arcane's mech, and then just hasn't hasn't really had room. Everyone else has taken farm priority over this Marana. They kind of missed their timing to put the foot on the gas, you know, uh, on the side of Ashray. I'm not really sure how it fell apart for them because the early game looked pretty solid and the sports were having a really good game, but they didn't really get anything from the troll, I feel. Like if we just look at the game overall, the, the impact difference from troll and Sven I can't remember seeing anyone really run down and killed by troll this game. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's, just been a, it's been a struggle. Like the majority of the fight's really dictated by, by FY and Bach, this Tiny and Razor, pulling their weight. Another roast, though. Heroic going to get their hands on this one. Aegis, Refresher Shard, and the Banner. Amazing stuff. Refresh a shard for Puck as well. He has the Aghanim Scepter and Parasma, so the damage now. He's closing in level 25. You get the Piercing Talent as well. Then those BKBs won't save you. Triple BKBs of, uh, on the course on Asher Ray, so getting 25 will be huge here for Puck. He's gonna go for the Wisdom Rune to get it. Very close now. So once he has that, they will go for a fight. Well, low. <laughs> He's not been able to do too much this game. He says, yeah, might as well enough. leave. <laughs> I'm out here. <laughs> no, he does have Basher now. You know, he's able to potentially stand and fight with the backup of his team. But it's 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 got to be a 
a delicate one to start the fight. You know, you can't do that from from you know second zero. He's I mean, have a bit of back and forth first. There's complications as well in it, right? Like you you don't have mobility in this build and troll, and you don't have absurd damage. It's quite survivable, but even so, they just went on Ori every single time, and Ori took all the hate. So I think Heroic did a good job realizing with how Troll has built, they just ignore him and go on Lesh and kill him first and then win by numbers. Uh, so I don't know how much it's gameplay and how much it's itemization, the, the struggles that Asherae are having here, mm. but between Ori having low survivability and no armor and Troll having all survivability, I feel like that's really given them a, a headache in the team fights. Just watching back Davai Lama's death there. You know, they did start off with uh, the good move on to Ori, killing that Lash, getting the barracks in the mid lane. And what we're we looking at now, a full set bottom, just a melee standing mid. And of course, that full set up at top for them to take. And a heroic with plenty of map space. Dire wave arriving in that bottom in the mid lane. So they can start to think and prep about just hardcore shopping top. It's, it's kind of an ideal situation to be in as the dire, right? Like you've taken bot and half of mid. So now you can just play into enemy ancients. It's a very comfortable spot when you have so much global as well. The rockets are great for just, you know, keeping the creeps into the enemy base. Um, they're doing a lot of things. Actually, the the banner here gets planted as a defensive banner on top lane uh, by Radiant. Oh, they had they had a banner as well. Yeah, this is the old banner. <laughs> <laughs> or is it the old banner? The, yeah, it's old banner. The dire, right? the dire just got one. Didn't they? Am I crazy? Did they give it away or something? I don't know, man. Did they leave it in the pit? Well, Davai Lama has gone. Oh, hang on. What's the Lotus bounce back? Lasso hook shot in onto two. Cogs the troll trapped low inside. Oh, they're gonna spend back as K1 comes in onto the Marana. Cleaves through Tian Ming. They've sprouted back. Razor stuck inside. Scofu going back onto him. Trying to find the troll now, though. K1 standing is called man fighting. Man fight. You can do it. One v one. Lou is doing it. The battle. Trans coming and the Sven is dropping lower, but he's got Aegis. Don't forget that second life available and the backup of his team. The he Yules of protection and now the move back onto the Troll Warlords here. Davai Lama with Sven killing off the Lesh and aiming for Lu now with a stun and a hit will take him down. To this Troll, he just has zero damage. He can't actually kill the Sven at all. He was laying into him. And that must have been like 40, maybe more auto attacks and the Sven just said, oh, okay, so what? I don't care. Look at his armor. He had 71 armor, I think, on Sven. Just doesn't care at all. 